Hey there, LinkedIn. What's up? I'm Chris Schweigel, and I'm coming at you here outside for the first time ever today. I thought it'd be kind of fun to be outside. And I'm posing the question to you today. Uh, what the heck does an assembly line, a Cornell University professor, and a dad in a Prius have to do to help you make more money? We'll get to that. But first of all, Hey, I'm Chris Schweigel. I am uh, do performance psychology to help you have more wealth, health, and relationships in your life. What we do is we destroy your limiting beliefs so that you can have way more revenue. And so, yeah, I know what you're thinking. Like, dude, why are you always going to be flexing, man? And it's true. Yes, I do own this Prius and drive it every day. Uh, I was going to do the Ferrari, but like, that's not very good in the snow. And so the Prius is just like more practical for a guy like me, you know, to get around family car, things like that, which is nice. And yes, to answer question number two, it is champagne colored. I know not everyone is bougie enough to have a car that, you know, is the same color, color as a like a sparkling uh, uh, drink. And so, yeah, you're welcome. Take it on in. So when we get into it today, we're going to be talking about psychological safety. And psychological safety is a relatively new term in psychology, and it's one that comes from the business side of psychology, or I.O. psychology, which is industrial organizational psychology. Interestingly enough, uh, it started kind of in the United States from an assembly line. Help, thank you, to Toyota. So in the late 70s, General Motors was building a bunch of really, really crappy cars. And uh, there they were still using Henry Ford's uh, you know, departments and compartmentalization of their business. And so, you know, like the managers wouldn't ask the assembly line workers how to make things improve. Also, they had a philosophy that you never, ever, ever stop the assembly line. Now, there were some consequences to that. Uh, sure, they made a ton of cars, but what they also did was they <laughs> created some really toxic work environments. And so one thing that they did was uh, by never keeping the assembly line uh, uh, stopped, by always keeping it going, quality went way down. The uh, workers there, the automotive workers, were unionized. They still are. And uh, uh, there was a lot of absenteeism on the assembly line floor. Lots of drinking, lots of doing drugs, sex, things like that. Uh, even smoking marijuana. Do you remember when that was legal? A lot of people doing terrible things, uh, even like sabotaging the the cars. They would put like uh, uh, pop cans or or like a beer can into the the car door, so it would rattle around and annoy the person who bought it, which is just really interesting, like a toxic culture, right? And so GM was looking for any way to help the culture of their company. Meanwhile, Toyota was doing awesome. This was the late 70s, early 80s, and they wanted to uh, really break into the United States market. Their problem, every single car had a 25% tariff on it, where they had the idea of a Toyota Corolla, a small car, big enough for a family, but easy enough to get around town. But they couldn't really make economic sense of it with the 25% tariff. So they partnered with General Motors and they made a uh, a plant in uh, in California, right outside of Oakland. I think it's called um, Fremont, California. And so they built cars there together. And what Toyota brought was the Toyota way, Kaizen. Kaizen in Japanese, Kai meaning change, and Zen meaning good. So the whole philosophy there was drastically different than General Motors. So what they did was they saw mistakes as opportunities for solutions. They took any opportunity to stop the assembly line if they could improve quality. Anyone on the line, no matter what your ranking, had the absolute opportunity to speak to upper management at any time if you had any sort of ideas. And so they really had this kind of very level playing field, a, a chance where you could speak your mind, where you could um, you know, learn new skills, where you could uh, take added responsibility, make mistakes, take risks, without fear of consequence. Now that wasn't happening at General Motors. So Toyota got what it wanted. It built Toyota Corollas, beautiful Toyota Corollas. And Chevy got to make Chevy Novas right there together. 
and uh, everything was going great. Except the problem was Chevy and GM, they couldn't replicate the Kaizen anywhere else. All of the GM workers hated Kaizen until they realized it and kind of became a part of the culture and then they loved it. The problem, and it's still happening today, is that GM has not been able to adapt any of these philosophies to any of their other assembly plans, which just goes to show that culture is super important. Culture is more important than any sort of government bailout, than any sort of stock price or investors or any sort of innovation with your product. Being able to speak up and speak your mind and feel safe doing so is the recipe to success in business, in teams. And we're all in teams. Even if you're a solopreneur, you are in a team in one way or another. But we didn't have a word for this at the time. That's where Cornell University professor, Dr. Amy Edmondson comes in. She was interested in this Kaizen approach that was brought over from Japan to the United States. And she went on to studying teams. Now this was a budding uh, industry in psychology in the, the uh, late seventies and eighties. And then in the nineties, actually in 1999, she and her team wrote a, uh, uh, or got a re research, um, study that they did published and for the very first time the term psychological safety was coined this was a, a report called psychological safety and i want to say team behavior in business something like that was the name of it but anyway it was the first time that the term psychological safety had been coined at all in psychology since then that one study has been cited eighteen thousand times and psychological safety is a main, main research uh, uh, point among psychologists. In fact, uh, even beyond psychology, I mean, Google in 2012 started the Aristotle Project, which cost anywhere between 800 and 900 million dollars. And what they found was amongst all their teams, amongst all the incentives, the number one, uh, the number one pre uh, precursor, the number one way that you could predict a team success above incentives and above perks and above uh, daycare, above uh, doubling your pay rate, the number one thing was psychological safety. People needing to feel safe in their team to make mistakes. People needing to feel safe in their team that they can talk to their uh, managers and their peers without fear of consequences. And so that's like really, really, really exciting stuff. And from that, Google said, hey, we're only going to have you spend 90% of your work hours on actual work. In fact, you have to spend the other 10 plus percent of your time here just trying whatever you want, just experimenting, just making mistakes, just checking stuff out. And what Google's found since then in the last 10 years is their best in innovations have come from that 10% of time when people could just do whatever they wanted. They celebrate mistakes and they celebrate successes because mistakes are really the door to opportunities, the door to innovation. So you've got to look at it that way. But what did Google find out was the number one way to sabotage team psychological safety. It's when each individual member believes their limiting beliefs when each individual member believes that they're not worthy, that they don't belong, that their value or that their values aren't congruent with other members, if they believe that they're not good enough or smart enough, if they don't believe that they have the power to speak up. And that's really fascinating stuff. So how does one go about eliminating their limiting beliefs? How does one go about having more psychological safety? Well, let me tell you about a dad and a Prius. Let's pretend that Prius is champagne colored. Let's pretend that Prius is so real. We could almost like touch it or see it right now. So this is what's awesome about being a dad in a champagne colored Prius. There are absolutely no expectations of me. I have no ego in that car. Everyone knows that that car is like, it checks all the boxes for everything, right? It's big enough to, I can hold a washer in there. I can hold a dryer in there. I can put a bed in the back. 
I can haul everything in my family. I could put a bike rack on the back when we go mountain biking. The car fits everything, but it is not at all sexy. There are no expectations when I roll down the road in that Prius. And you can see it's snowing now, but in a couple months, there's going to be a day when it's like 35 degrees, 40 degrees and sunny. And that sounds crazy to everyone else. But for us, we're going to be like popping tops and like, you know, sun's out, guns out type of stuff. And I can play any type of music I want in that car and it's okay. Which means I can make any mistake I want in life and it's okay. In this car, I can be listening to Slim Shady album and people are like, well, that, that boy's trying. I can be listening to NPR cranked up like a wait, wait, don't tell me trivia show and people are like, yeah, th that's on brand. Yeah. I mean, I can be listening to Kids Bop Kids or like Frozen 2 soundtrack and people are like, yeah, hey, that dude's a dad, right? Or I could be listening to like Vanilla Ice or something super nerdy. TLC, I love TLC. I can listen to TLC in this car and people are like, what? Makes sense. That's on brand. So that's how you get ahead in business is you take your ego out of it. If you don't need to get patted on the back, if you don't need to be sexy, if you don't need to be the smartest person in the room, it takes a lot of weight off of your shoulders. Then you can experiment. Then you can make mistakes. Then you can shoot for the stars and do whatever you want to. So right now it's uh, snowing a little bit here and uh, uh, my watch said it was 18 degrees. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my buns inside, but I wanna thank you first and foremost for being here. And uh, uh, what I do in life is I help people destroy their limiting beliefs. And I've got a free masterclass for you. So you go to infiniteskies.life backslash masterclass. And what you're gonna get for me for free is an email every single day for the next three weeks. And it's all sorts of tips on productivity, on flow state, on how to add more psychology into your life and into your business so that you can have more wealth, health, and relationships. And I think this masterclass pairs really, really well with like New Year's goals and resolutions to that make sure that you have a nice mental competitive edge to you. So go ahead and go to infiniteskies.life backslash masterclass and start to get your mental edge. In the meantime, I'll see you next week. Ooh, I gotta tell you, from a much, much more tropical location. See you then. Take care.